This is a couple more examples of empirical formulas and molar mass determinations. So we have 49.52% manganese here, so that's uh, 49.52 grams of manganese. And then 50.48 grams of oxygen. Because remember, we can take these out of 100 grams, so their percents are the same as grams. Now, since we're doing an empirical formula, we are going to divide by the molar masses from the periodic table. This is 54.938. And this one is 15.999. We can go one more, I guess, grams. I remember I'm choosing a chart form versus showing the times one mole over molar mass just to help to keep it organized again for you. So this one here turns out to be 0 0.901 moles. And this one is 3.155 moles. Because remember when we divide grams by molar mass, we do get moles. So then we're going to divide each of these by the least. So this is 0 0.901. And this is divided by 0 0.901. Now we get a 1, and this one comes out to be 3.5. I wanted to show you this particularly because of this. This is not roundable to 4 or down to 3. It's telling you that there's a whole number ratio here that's not um, uh, divisible by 2 per se, in other words, for this, or actually is divisible by 2, I should have said. So to get 3.5 to become a whole number, we need to times both of these by 2. So imagine me taking this by 2. So essentially, we have MnO3.5. And you cannot have 2 and a half atoms. So we times this by 2. And the actual empirical formula is MnO2O7. So watch out for things that are like 3.5, 2.5, 1.5. You need to double the whole thing in order to get the compound. Because the ratio from this is 7 to 2 which is really 3.5 to 1. Okay, now if I get another example, let's say my ratio comes out to be 1.33. I wanted to point this out to you also. So let's say this happens. This is not roundable to 1 or to 2. So again, we got to times this one now by 3, and that will give me a 4. So look out for things that round like this. They're telling you that it's not a simple whole number ratio yet. You've got to find a number that converts these into whole numbers. So watch out for that. Now, of course, this one does not apply to this particular question. Okay, now last thing. What about determining molar mass again? Let's practice one more of these. So this compound has two manganese atoms in it. Okay, well, now i got a parenthesis. Now that's seven. Just think mathematics. Whatever's inside parentheses, we distribute the seven through. So there are seven sulfurs and 28 oxygens. So to get the molar mass of this, I'm going to take twice times 54.938, which is the molar mass of manganese, plus 7 times 32.06, plus 28 times 15.9994. And then we'll add all of this together. Okay, and this will give us the answer to the molar mass, okay, of this compound which is 782.27, okay, and there's a 9.2. Now, we really need to round that to the hundreds place. So it would be 782.28 grams per mole. And that's how you do molar mass of compounds.